Just wanted to welcome you back here. Um, I am super excited to be sharing you my third mistake uh, in this series of, of my top 12 mistakes. I am a total idiot, yes, total idiot, uh, and I have made tons and tons of mistakes. But what is so great is that we can learn from these mistakes, right? So in the first one, I talked a little bit about uh, how I set myself up for complete failure by just setting my goals way, way too high, and I didn't have any kind of stepping stone goals, and I just felt like a total failure over the first few years. Um, I was a failure, okay? That's it, just it. But you should never feel like a failure. You should always feel like you have like this strength and this, this power to move on because you're going to achieve better and better things in this progress, right? I had progress, by the way, but it, there was very, very little of it. Now, the second big mistake I made was I worked uh, way too much in, in unopened markets, meaning that I, I wasted a lot of time um, thinking of this like, I, you know, idea of like, hey, how can I explode something really, really big when the best thing is to focus where you live, your local backyard really is, is where you should really be focusing your time and effort. Now, the third mistake I want to discuss with you um, actually is related a little bit to the first one. And um, it's essentially, uh, uh, I'll take you back here. So when I got started, you know, I, I was fairly cocky and um, I had these big goals and I was going to achieve so much. And um, uh, I left the banking world and I'd saved up a bit of money, which was, you know, kind of the, 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 the solution to this mistake. But um, I, I also was way, way, way too positive uh, and thought that things were going to move super, super fast, right? And so I moved back to Luxembourg. I had signed on my, my first kind of uh, pretty decent professional uh, uh, basketball contract, or at least it paid for my bills and so on. But what was really funny in those negotiations was I didn't negotiate to get a free apartment, uh, free living. And I would moved back from Australia back to, 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 to Europe. And so uh, I was living with Mary in the basement of my dad's place. And we we're like, all right, we need to get our own place, of course. So the first thing we do is go out there and we find a place that's super central in Luxembourg and it's too big for us and it costs way too much money. And and the mistake that, I, that, that, that I'm going to tell you about that I keep on making over and over again is I almost always kind of live beyond my means because I thought I was going to make so much money. I was going to be so, so successful. And I was like, okay, well, I can afford that even though at that time I couldn't really afford that, right? And, and so I had to start eating into savings all the time and I was spending more every month than what I was making. And so we got this place in Luxembourg and, and it was, like I said, it was just way too much per month. And then um, later on, I decided to move to London and, and I did pretty well in London for a couple of years because I shared uh, the expenses with, with uh, Mary and, and I um, also, uh, we would also usually be sharing with other people as well. So yes, uh, it would obviously be super, super small and so on, but at least I was kind of living within my means. But there came a point where we decided to split apart and I was going to move in with one of my, uh, the lady on my team, her name is uh, Dr. Terry. Uh, and we got along really, really well. And we were like, we're going to open up like this new skin center where people can come and do meetings at our place. And we could just make it like totally, uh, you know, focused around the business and building the business. And um, some of you have actually been to that apartment. And once again, uh, I wasn't making enough money to get this place, but I knew that I needed to get, do something that, that would be, um, that would help us to build the business. And this was kind of the solution to that. So once again, um, I'm living in a very stressful situation because my outgoings were more than my incomings. And I was just stressing all the time about this and I had to make things work. So some people can argue and say like, look, what you actually did was not a mistake. What you did was you would actually put yourself in a place where you had to make it work. So, um, uh, for me to even survive, I would have to just get more results in the business. And yes, that is maybe, you know, a great, great thing for some, but at that point in my life, it was just too stressful for me. What I should have probably done is gotten like some kind of a part-time job, some kind of even maybe a full-time job and done this on the side until this was big enough so I could actually focus on it. And what's really interesting what we see with many, many people is that when they do this, a business on a part-time basis, when they actually have either a full-time job or part-time job, they actually get more done. They're actually more effective. So always be uh, very thoughtful when you're thinking about, you know, sucking your boss or whatever else. Just be like, hey, is this really a great time for me to do so? If you have a partner that's going to help support you and so on, then great, you know, that, that always helps. Um, but because then you're able to be in, in a good frame of mind. And that's the whole thing is 
I was not. I was, I was, I was feeling like I was coming from a place of desperation. I was coming from a place of kind of negativity and, and worrying if I was even going to be able to make it, right? And, and, and so that wasn't the right energy to attract like really, really fun people and really great leaders into the team. Um, and then, of course, I continued this incredible trend. So a few years later here, I'm back with Mary. Uh, we're living in in in, in her. Uh, she had this like tiny little studio where it was pretty awesome. Like you could actually walk into this studio and you could be in the bed and touch somebody that was in the kitchen or touch somebody that was in the bathroom. Like you could pretty much reach anybody anywhere. This is how big this place was. I mean, it was humongous. Like we, <laughs> I remember having like people over <laughs> for 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 dinner or. We, we didn't invite very many people for dinner, but like some of our very, very, very good friends. And it would literally like the three of us would fit in there, but like kind of like be bumping into each other. Like, you know, that's that's how big this place was. Anyway, so th so we were like, okay, of course, when you need to get a, at least a place that has a bedroom, like a separate place. So you're not like touching each other wherever you are. And and of course, we decided to 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 get that in, in Notting Hill, one of the more expensive areas of London. And once again, I was in, back in that situation where I thought, you know, my business was growing. I was like, yes, I'm going to be making that money. But it wasn't just growing fast enough. It just had that kind of like little bit of a turn this way instead of like a turn that way. And so once again, like every month, like we're just stressing, am I going to make it? Am I not going to make it? Right. And and then we did one more move just like that um, in, in, in London as well, where it was like, OK, like we're always looking at our budget. We're like, OK, this is our budget. And of course, we always end up getting a place that's out of our budget. Um, and then once again, in the U.S., we decided to get a house that was like a six bedroom place. I mean, I don't think I even went into three or four of those bedrooms ever in my life. You know, it's kind of like you go into the kids bedrooms and your bedroom and, and that's it. Like, that, you know, the rest of them, like, I don't know why we had those anyway. So I just kept on making this this stupid mistake, you know, like that hopefully I'll learn one day, right? Or you just create enough offense so you don't have to worry about the defense. Of course, that's always kind of the solution. And that was always my thinking with this is like, no, it is going to get better. It's going to grow. It, it, I'm not going to have to worry about the money. And and so I, I was always kind of pushing those limits. And, um, and as I said before, this could maybe be like, you know, a blessing in disguise because you're actually pushing yourself to like expand and be like no I'm you know think bigger and, and push yourself to work harder and so on but I do believe that if you are in a state of that kind of desperation and stress you're probably most people okay not everybody but most people are going to uh, uh, not get the same results as if you were in a situation where you were getting money coming in you would then be able to from like a part-time or something else you would then be able to build the business in peace and when you build a business because it's fun and because you believe this is something you're going to have in the future, um, then you're, you're, I think you're much more likely to, to have fun and, and get more fun people on board your team. And also, you know, there's sometimes investments involved in the business. Um, we'd invest a lot of money into different things, um, especially events. Uh, you know, we have, we have a big event coming up in, in, in Spain now. And, and, you know, for me, it's, it's like whatever you do is be careful with, you know, how you're spending your money and so on. But events is what I highly suggest. That's the one place where I would say that's where you need to invest your, your money is getting to these bigger events because that's what's going to take your business to the next level always. And so, uh, you know, we do, we'd also put money into different things like exhibitions and all kinds of things. You know, I travel to see my team in different places. So that's why you kind of need to have the other source of income a lot of times before you go full time too early on. So I hope that's been useful for you. I'm uh, uh, excited to share all these stupid things that I've done in the business. Uh, you know, it, it's not easy for me to share some of these things because, uh, you know, you kind of just look in the mirror and go, yeah, you're an idiot. And you don't really want to tell the world that you're an idiot. Right. And but. Um, I do also think that that you know some of you are going to be able to to use some of this information to help you to to make better decisions, right? And 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 the thing is, we're all different. So you know what works for me might not work for you, and 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 vice versa, right? Like it might be best for you to have that kind of stress in your life to be able to, to push yourself to, to, to get better results. Whereas in my situation, I feel that uh, it would have been better to have maybe an income, and I would have built my business much quicker than what I did. I was very, very slow, as, as you might know if you know my story. But eventually got there, so super happy about that. And that's mistake number three done. I'm super excited that you are following this. Please share this with somebody if you find it useful. And I just want to thank you so much for, for, for taking the time. All right, now go out there and build a bigger and better business and have fun while doing it. All right, see you soon.